All right. Um, so I'm uh, developing the stable diffusion algorithm for uh, Grasshopper. And uh, one thing that I want to include in the uh, current version is to be able to um, store the uh, parameters along with the image. So um, I have built um, this, um, uh, this routine where we can uh, have the prompt and the negative prompt as well as um, input parameters like the seed uh, to be um, embedded inside the generated image. So um, once we um, trigger the algorithm, it actually sends a request to our remote server and we get uh, the result. So I got something like this. And these are stored uh, inside um, the folder for the, uh, for the output. So here I defined this as the file path. And you can see the image here as well as it's archived here. So uh, this image name now has the corresponding prompt, negative prompt and the seed values along with it. So if you want to reuse them um, in, uh, in Grasshopper, you can copy paste this information. It will basically generate the same image. So let's try this a few more times. Um, generating, um, I'm using inference as 100 so that uh, stable diffusion runs 100 times. And here you see the, it takes a while for it to refresh, but um, there you have it. So the input parameters are copied as well. Um, now I took this a bit further uh, to see what else can we do with the uh, stable diffusion inside Grasshopper environment. And um, I created a routine where we can um, uh, sample this as a bitmap and bake it as a mesh object. So, um, here you see the current resolution, which is 512. And I want to, let's say, downsample it to uh, 64 by 64 bitmap. Uh, what I do is I uh, make these uh, calculations of uh, sampling a point grid. Uh, these will be the corresponding pixel values on the image. And um, this is actually connected to the, um, to the generated image sampler here. And um, right now under the filter, I'm reading the color values. And what I did was, uh, let me actually turn off the mesh for now and show you the point grid that I'm working with. Um, I actually have a 64 by 64 um, point grid and these correspond to uh, uh, pixel values of the image, but they also have uh, the sequential indices, point indices. And I built these, um, these, these number series to get, um, to construct a mesh surface. So basically imagine that we are drawing a mesh quad between every, um, every corner of this uh, point grid. Um, so I need to supply, um, indices of zero, one, 64 and 65 to construct the mesh. And that's what I do here. Basically, I generated uh, number sequences and these uh, correspond to the indices of the mesh quad object. So here you see lists of uh, these points and they go to, um, they actually take in the point grid as well. <clears throat> and um, the extracted color values. Uh, so what it does is it basically samples the um, RGB value from this pixel from the image. And then um, you can actually um, construct um, the mesh with the corresponding uh, vertex vertices and the color values too. So you can, uh, you can visualize it like this. So it will basically be a down sampled version of the generated image, um, but it, um, it works pretty nicely. So I'm going to turn these off so that we can see um, how the object is. So I can technically bake this now. And what it will do is it will generate a mesh surface. But if you go to the rendered view, the color values will be baked to the to the mesh uh, texture. So you can actually now have the image as an object inside uh, inside the Rhino environment. So uh, I'm going to run the stable diffusion again. Uh, so we can actually see how fast it takes to actually generate a new image um, and bake this one as well. So you can actually keep track of these um, mesh objects now 
and uh, store them um, inside uh, Rhino environment. So this is of course just the beginning, but um, technically you can um, add further more functionality to this. Uh, basically you can um, have multiple image samplers, extract other values like our, um, the channels, red, green, blue, or, or the alpha channel, and do um, other sorts of manipulation to the to the point grid or um, do other types of extraction as well. So um, you can give it a give it a try, but also um, keep track of the prompts um, and the information like the seed values. If you want to reiterate any um, any images, you can use the same seed value, and uh, you can try this tool.